Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Gloomhaven the Guildmaster campaign. Before we jump in, I just want to uh, show the quick changes that we've made and one purchase that I'm about to make. Um, we're going to be keeping the Sunkeeper, the Night Shroud, and honestly I'm forgetting if we had the Cragheart in uh, before. I don't remember, but we're bringing the Cragheart and the Elementalist. I wanted to play as the Elementalist, particularly for this um, this scenario, because well, first I just want to show there's they've made a few changes here and a few things that I really like. You can see that it shows where the scenario is. Uh, there's a little arrow above it, so when you're moving around the map, you can try and find where it's located. That's pretty nice. Before it was just kind of off screen, and you had to kind of zoom out to find out where it was okay there it is and then zoom in um, obviously you can still click on it and it will zoom in um, but instead of a, a big thing big uh, screen showing up in, in the middle and sometimes it would be too tall if there were too many enemies um, there are there is that one issue if there is still a lot of enemies then they're very tiny however when you do finally choose which scenario or if you're interested in looking at it you know the the pictures will or their uh, avatars will um, show up in a normal size so it's something else that I'm noticing and I don't actually know if it was there before but when you're choosing it actually says now at the start of each round the air element is set to strong I don't think I had noticed this before, so I don't know if this is new or if this is um, if this was always there and I just never noticed it. I, I want to say I had never seen it before, so I don't think it existed, <laughs> but uh, I could have just missed it this entire time. I'm, I'm pretty sure it wasn't there because even lose if the crag card is exhausted, I still don't even remember that. So, right. Um, so this is the one that I'm going to choose, and it since it says we're getting the air element for free every round, I wanted to bring in somebody that could actually use it. It's kind of nice to know what the uh, scenario effects are going to be before we jump into it, so that we can um, plan accordingly. I'm not sure if that's the way it's going to be for the normal campaign, um, when they do finally um, bring the actual Gloomhaven board game campaign over to the digital port. I'm not sure, but for now, it's nice. We can we can make some more plans beforehand. Okay, um, and before we do go, I wanted to go to head over to the Enchantress. This was something that I had done. Um, Actually, not for the Night Shroud. I had done it for the Mind Thief. And they have, I think it's Scurry, the move three, and then attack. And I put a jump, and I really, really had a lot of fun with that. Um, it was, it gave the ability, it gave the Mind Thief the ability to jump over the front line and start attacking some of the uh, range attackers in the back and, and still be able to go invisible. So the Night Shroud will be able to do the same thing with that. Move, attack, and then kind of wreak some havoc in the to the range attackers in the back line. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. Again, we can always just uh, sell it and get our money back if I don't like it, but I'm pretty sure I'll like this. Uh, let's head over to the trainer. I'm pretty sure that it's still this. We can still unlock uh, this character. I'm not going to do it until somebody asks for it. Um, right. I don't think, I mean, I don't have the money to purchase anything else. No, I don't. Eight gold. Okay. Well, I think that's enough uh, to start off. I'm not going to change any of the cards. I think everybody has what I was looking for anyway. Oh, actually, we do have this the explosive punch. I never assigned it to the Crag Heart after um, after leveling up. 
And so we're bringing it in and I'm going to be dropping Opposing Strike. It is a really, it is a fun card. It's great when it works, but it's very difficult to make it work. And the retaliation really, it's not very helpful. Um, I'm, I don't really put the Crag Heart in the in that situation to be using retaliate anyway um, so I would rather have the move four to get him into a better position um, so that he can continue to attack or it sorry it can get into a better position to attack uh, other than that you know I'm I'm considering to bring nature's lift because we don't have necessarily a healer. I mean, the Sun Keeper, of course, she can help to heal. Um, the Cragheart does have some other options here and there. And the Elementalist does help. So I, you know, I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. I don't, I don't think we need to bring this other one. I was, I was considering to bring it just so that I could use this bottom. Um, but we could use this uh, near the beginning of the scenario, and then later in the scenario we could use it for the bottom, since we're going to have air the entire time. Um, but I just, I just don't see it being as helpful as I would like it to be. Um, particularly if we're bringing in some extra move, then we don't necessarily need the extra range, right? That's that's going to be my reasoning. Okay, well, let's take on the Cragheart's um, first personal quest. We're going to be fighting some bandit archers. This E shows that it's an elite, uh, the elite archer. Some bandit guards, hounds, and probably one Enox archer elite. I assume this is kind of, uh, I don't think it's a named enemy but um it's probably going to be one or two that are going to be the last enemy that we need to take on i could be wrong but one of the savas ancient temples the centuries old shrine of the zephyrs was used to teach young savas of the ways of the winds the crag heart must journey there to connect with his ancestors oh it says his so we already know that that they are not Savas are not um, male or female. So and if you if you don't know that, and if you'd like to hear a, a discussion, uh, I'll put a link in the description of when I and my friend Andy talked about the Savas culture. And there's going to be more coming. I just got really busy, uh, but I promise we, we are talking about um, another one coming up soon um <laughs> relatively soon so <laughs> I, I i don't know when but anyway all right let's go oops interesting all right it looks like the there was an update recently um yeah that's not uh the text isn't going you know Along the way, it's it's just printed up. That's nice. Since being cast away from the Sava society, the Cragheart spent most of their time there. Good, reflecting on their failures alone. Excuse me. Now being part of the mercenary community, they have decided to research Sava's history in the area of the Shrine of the Severs, a holy place dedicated to the winds that no longer blow. The ancestors used the place to teach mastery over the element of air, but it has fallen into disuse and disrepair. On reaching the temple, you find the shrine no longer silent, but echoing with the sound of looters desecrating the statues and frescoes. Oh, I like this. I like it. They, they have a new update coming. So we lose if the uh, crag heart is exhausted and we always have wind so that's nice so there is a new update coming um, if you haven't seen the update that uh, um, that they put out recently 
Uh, I'm forgetting. I know. I, I don't know if they actually named the name of it um, or what uh, types of... I don't think I've seen any enemies or anything else other than circles and uh, three spears are going to be in the next um, update. So I'm very excited. I, I really enjoyed the three spears. I didn't get a lot of time with circles, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, right. That's it. Crowbar the head off that statue. It'll fetch a pretty penny and some lord's estate. Some of these look almost lifelike. Look at that one by the door. He... Wait. Was it there a minute ago? Oh, damn. He's got friends. All right. Um, yeah, circles, I, I, I did have some fun with it, but I, uh, I didn't have, I didn't spend a whole lot of time playing as that character, so I'm looking forward to testing it out, particularly here, where I can actually test out a lot of the, the, the different, uh, strategies, so. Okay, well, we have a trap here, trap back there, and... A small room and a, a small room back there too. Okay, so this should be pretty straightforward. <laughs> I'll say that now, but uh, obviously we might see some trouble later. And up first for this round, we have the Night Shroud. Uh, going at 15 with Doomed Breeze, I'm just gonna use this for the movement. And then, um, well, and curse, of course, and then wings of night to attack, but mainly to go invisible. I'd like for him to be around here. Next is the sun keeper bringing up the shields, of course, is a, is a good uh, start. And then we can make an attack uh, likely against this bandit archer. If we can start killing them, these archers, before they start doing some attacks, that'd be nice. I'd like for her to actually be the uh, the target, so I probably won't move too many around, uh, particularly for the elite guard here. Um, and we can make our ranged attack because of uh, we we won't be moving around anyway. So, right, um, elementalist. I am kind of using a couple early cards for for it. Um, however. I'd like to be using this to push, and uh, there are some other options with that. We could be using uh, this one, of course, which is going to be targeting a second. Um, oops, where did that go? Targeting two enemies. We have Shaping Ether, which also has a push three. So another option is, I think what I want to do is kind of move them, move it a little bit this way and then we can be in line to push as far as that uh, trap back there I'm not sure we'll we'll probably have this bandit archer down pretty easily however I am bringing in fire and that's going to be a really good combination for this one in the future with an attack five um, well in the next round of course and Kragart at 35 um, Kind of bringing it all the way back here to make an attack against this bandit archer and hold it in place while bringing in the earth element uh, so that we can take this one out as fast as possible as well. That crap will be used this round so uh, the crag heart doesn't need to go all the way around. It can kind of cut through this way. That's That's my thought. We are going before them, so that's nice. The bandit guard is just going to be attacking for three against the uh, sun keeper. That should be pretty... Uh, that should be fine with the two shield. And then the bandit archers are going to be attacking two for one. Two targets for an attack of one. Let's see how we can deal with this, though. Um, since they are going to be attacking... Oh, interesting. So it looks like if you click a second time, it goes away, no matter what. And then the right click is gone. Weird. 
Does it, if I click anywhere else? So it looks like the only way to move now, and, and I assume to attack, is to hit confirm. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Oh, and then now, it looks like a lot of people complaining about um, not choosing the right, like now I can't, if you double click, you know, on anything, so you have to click confirm target. I mean, I'm okay with that, but it was kind of nice that I could just, you know, double click and it was done. I know it's not that bad of a, a thing to hit confirm target, but it does kind of make you, you know, realize what you're doing. I'm fine with it. It'll just take a, a minute to realize it or to remember. Um... I'm also noticing the, the art on the side here is looking better. They actually, I'm not sure what they had before. It, it, I don't think they actually had the, the icon um, of the thing. I think it was just like, you have boots and it would be lit up. I'm, I think, I don't remember, but this definitely looks new. Uh, okay. Well, let's let's go for that attack good well we have one less um attacker here we can shield up good and i guess we're just we're still just going to be using this um attack here it is a plus one attack but it's going to push into that trap is is my uh, idea behind this a plus one that's great looks like they've even outlined the text so it's a little easier to see good good and i mean i'd like to move here and i'm pretty sure it's still just going to attack because it it needs to move here so it will attack there um I mean, I'm thinking I'd like to be moving this way, but let's actually. I wanna. I wanna see something here. Undo waypoint. I'm gonna skip the movement. I just wanna test this out. So it's still not doing it. Do they have restart turn? They don't. Okay. I, I wanted to just test it out. Um, that's still kind of annoying. You should be able to... Oh. You know, you should be able to uh, skip your movement. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna mess that up quite a bit. You should still be able to skip your movement and uh, infuse the element. There's... I know that's a thing in the normal game, so... Okay, well, we'll just use our shield, that's fine. No incoming attacks there. And good. Okay, so we don't have the fire, which is kind of a pain. We do have air and earth. We can see if maybe the elementalist is going to use that or uh, use both of them. Or maybe the Cragheart will be able to use the Earth element. We'll, we'll check that out. Alright, round two. Night Shroud going early again. We'll make an attack, bringing in the... Uh, or infusing the Dark element. Um, and we will also be doing an attack on the bottom as well. Let's. I'm, I'd like to be killing this uh, Bandit Guard Elite as fast as possible. So we'll muddle and we will make this attack. This probably won't be much. Maybe it's a plus one, we, maybe we get lucky, but uh, mostly for the um, element there. Next up is the elementalist, who's going to be moving and infusing some ice. It would have been nice if this, if this would have, uh, you know, the night shroud would move. So I think what I'm going to do here is 
I might go later. I'm going to go later with the Elementalist, and I'll, I'll show why. But um, anyway, moving and infusing some ice, and we can use uh, these if I if I don't use that. I don't think I am. Um, so we'll probably use both of them to make an attack there, hopefully killing them. Uh, but Craghart will be going first with explosive punch and a heavy swing, a uh, heaving swing. I'd like to be killing this archer and then just run toward the door. He does, uh, it does actually have the boots of striding so we could move one, two, three, four, five, six, you know. So I'd like to be getting close to this door very, very quickly. Uh, tactical order with the Sun Keeper at 29 and practical plans. What I'm thinking here is if it's not dead, then we can kill with practical plans and then move four. If it is dead, then we can move with practical plans and move somebody else with uh, the move four. So I'm not sure who that's going to be. It could be the um, Elementalist. It could be the Cragheart. It could be the Night Shroud. So I'm thinking it's going to be the Night Shroud if I am going to move so that both of them get out of the way. That way the Elementalist can finally just move up, right? So. Okay. Well, we are going before them again, so let's make sure that they're all dead before they get that opportunity. All right, well, that's not a plus one, but again, this was more for that infusing the element there. <laughs> that did nothing as well. That was pretty much unhelpful. Uh, I, I am going to use this now because I want to bring Cloak of Shade back immediately uh, so that I can go invisible going into that next room. That'll be helpful. All right, heaving swing. Um, it's unfortunate actually now that I'm looking at it. Heaving swing, I have the earth element. Um, I should have maybe had him go first, um, but then he wouldn't have been able to, yeah. I did it this way so that he could have, we could have this, but anyway. I wanted to be using Earth and then infusing it immediately. So, um, I don't think I'm going to use the boots. Instead, what I'm going to do is move here. Uh, move here, pick up the gold. And I'll use the boots to get in the next round. And I don't really need to get past the door. I just need to get about here. So I could use pretty much any card uh, to get to right, right up close to the door to make a range attack into the next room. So we'll skip this and we'll pick up the loot here. So we didn't make any progress here, I think. I think I'm still going to do this the way that I was thinking. Let's just move out of the way because the Elementalist might be able to kill it uh, immediately or in the, in the, during his turn. All right. Yep. Uh -huh. It's going to take me some time. And then we'll just move all the way up to here with the, um, the light and the dark. Okay. Yeah, so we'll use this. Uh, we're going to leave darkness, of course. Um, now, please. Draw that plus one. No, of course not. It is muddled, or he is muddled, so he'll be attacking the um, <laughs> be attacking the crag card anyway. Not too worried about it. I do have this minor mana potion, um, and another thing is this shadow armor. So 
if we have a major attack coming in, um, I I can just uh, get you know get rid of it using that shadow armor. All right. Well, we can mitigate a couple of that damage anyway. We do need to get rid of him now because he is strengthened. But I'd like to open up this door right right away. Uh, I don't want to sit around and wait for for them to kill them. So what I'll probably end up doing is um, let's think about this. We could use Earth and Claude if I had um, Earth, and I don't think I'll be able to bring that in. Which is unfortunate. I could use it for the minor mana potion, but I don't think that it's necessary. We we should be able to just kill him uh, before entering that next room, or while we're entering that next room. A little bit of a change here, although nope, it is going to be the crag heart because seventy-seven. They both tie at thirteen. But seventy-seven is uh, earlier than 91. All right, you're gonna have to excuse the loud noises that this is, uh, it's 10.30 p.m. right now, and there's like a sewage <laughs> truck in the front yard, uh, or in the front, in the road, pumping, so. Great, uh, anyway. I don't know where I left off here. I think... Oh, right. So we're going to start off with the Kragheart. 13. And... Um, so we're going to basically just punch here. And then run away. Um, yeah, run up to here. We can use the boots when we walk into the next room. Uh, next up is the Night Shroud. Who is going to go invisible. And then I hope that he is able to hit somebody. He, he can move up to three here. So one, two, three, this is the space that he can move to. So I'm, I'm assuming that there's going to be at least one enemy in this half of the room. Um, I'm hoping anyway, and we can make a pretty major attack while being invisible. So that should help out quite a bit. 35 with the elementalist, uh, if the Bandit Guard is still not dead, then we will make an attack three and then move five. Probably move up here to stand in the doorway. I'm not sure. Probably not yet. I'm going to have to figure out if uh, I even want to move five because, I mean, he it does have the shadow armor, but I might be having to need that. I might need that right here because this is already strengthened. Um, but if that's not the case, whoops, then we could move up to here with it and, uh, figure out where to be. Yeah, it, it's just gonna have to be relative to what they're doing. Holy Strike and Daybreak, both 85. We're going really late with the Sun Keeper, but I do want to stun so we can wait till somebody moves up into the doorway or at least a little closer. We can strike them, move up, and bless the night shroud okay well 71 the bandit guard or 70 for the bandit guard is this going to move one so we don't really have to worry about what's in this room either so that should be pretty helpful um, let's see if we can actually defeat it before we move on though good all right well we don't have to worry about that one at all then and I'm not going to pick up the money. I Okay. I'm not going to pick up this loot, unfortunately. It's just not on our way. So, just going to have to leave it behind. Okay. So, let's open up this door and see what's behind it. Yeah. Well, it looks like there's quite a few enemies here. This one's going to move two. This one's going to move two. Move one, move one. So here is the problem, right? If I do move in, 
Um, I, of course, will be going invisible, but if I do continue on in here, then one of them will be able to uh, attack the Sun Keeper. Now, nah, that shouldn't be too bad. It is an attack three, um, but we do have some, some potions for her, so I think it will be fine. However, do we want to move here or here? If we move here, you know, then this one's going to be the one that will make it in and we'll be kind of blocking. Yeah, I think it will be better to go here because then one of these will walk into the, the trap. That's going to be nice. So. Let's go invisible. It is a noisy, noisy night out there tonight. We got planes taken off. I I want to, you know what? Let's try to kill one of these now, or do I want to attack here? Hmm. What number are you? Three, and you're five. So you're probably going to be the one walking into there. And then that one is 12 and you don't even actually, you don't have a number at all. Um, I don't know what that means. So we could make this attack and potentially kill this one immediately. However, killing them I think is going to be the better option. Because I can, I can kill them with just like a normal I didn't actually see what they were doing they're attacking for one or they're they're moving one attack two at range five and then creating traps wonderful we can use a lot of traps uh, it's only that one there so So, hmm, that's a range three, so one, two, three, that's too far, and otherwise, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, we could get, we could get the elementalist to here, but then we're not going to be dealing any we're not going to be doing anything with that. But let's... I guess let's do this. Um, this way we've, we've got it in a good position for the next round. So move up to there. and skip the rest of the movement and then we're just going to skip the attack kind of a boring turn for it but uh yeah here we go oh there was actually another space and why why were you the oh because yeah that was that was my bad i don't think i'm going to use it let's just take that damage um, oh, this is annoying now because this one's standing right there. Well, let's make this attack. We can even... No, I'm going to wait for the Jagged Sword. Oh. Well, come on. Uh, skip your movement. See, it says, like, we get to bless somebody. So it's the same thing. Uh, let's bless. Let's bless you. It's the same thing as, um, uh, infusing an element. Like, that, that should be a thing, right? Okay. I'll stop doing it now. Okay, well. Let's see what, uh, what cards we're looking at here. Well, first up is 32 with a Sun Keeper with Empowering Command, an attack 4, 
And for the top, we can heal up our friend here, the Elementalist, and uh, strengthen and infuse some light. That's going to help both of us quite a bit. And I'm hoping that this attack for, for the Elementalist will deal a substantial amount of damage to kill the Bandit Guard. We need to get through this door ASAP. Uh, then the elemental step 40. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the bottom action here. It could be pretty nice. I'm not entirely sure who they could actually see though. Um, this is one of those uh, really tricky um, situations that I'm not sure if the digital game... I mean, I, I could be totally wrong and the digital game does everything perfectly fine, but I feel like sometimes it doesn't. So. Um, I do have this attack three with a push three, or sorry, an attack one with a push three. I'd like to be pushing uh, a target through some of these traps. Not sure which one that's going to be though. Um, and I could do the bottom action of this one for an immobilize. We'll see. That would burn this card, but it would be a pretty major hit. So, And with strengthen, that might be a good idea for the elementalists. Um, Cragheart at 61 with a Crater. It's another push. Now what I'm thinking here is Ice Spikes will infuse Ice and Earth. And what could happen if I go that route that I could use another push. So I'm going to take this just in case. I'm not sure if that's what's going to happen. And then the move 3 here plus with or without the Boots of Striding, we might be able to get into a good position uh, to push somebody into a trap. And last, the Night Shroud at 84. Um, I'm not going to be able to use it for the more powerful ability, but an attack three is still pretty nice with Smoke Step, a move, and Infusing Dark. So the Bandit Guards are going to be doing the same thing that they did last time. And the, actually I think this is basically the same thing that they, that happened the last time. Five, okay, so he, the Archer back here can still continue to reach uh, the Elementalist and the Sun Keeper. Okay, well let's, let's heal up the Elementalist and strengthen it at the same time. And now let's see an attack here. Huh? Okay, well it was not enough. However, stunned and we'll be able to, um, mm, We'll have to see. It it might it might not work the way that we want, but we could probably still attack and push even if we don't kill. Um, although he is still um, stunned. Let's see who we can attack here. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking here. I wanted to attack this one to push this way, but you can see obviously that's not the option. Um, one, two, three, four. So we can push this one. Let's certainly do that. We'll use the, the push. We'll attack here. See, it seems weird that we can see, we can see this one. You can connect these, but I mean, that is a connection right there. Right? Is it because this corner is attached to the wall? But I would rule. I mean, okay, this one is pretty free. I don't know. I don't know. It seems it seems awkward though, doesn't it? So one, we can push them all the way back there. That's pretty nice. <laughs> And, I mean, we can't make this attack. We could make this attack, but I'm not sure if that's completely um, necessary. I don't want to waste such a big 
uh, attack there. So we're just what we're just going to do is skip our movement. Um, I could still go for this, but I think we'll be fine. We'll make that uh, attack with the with the crag heart. Yeah, with this one. Good, 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 good. So, this back one here is going to move two, one, two. That's not enough for it to reach. If we moved here, that would be enough to reach. If we moved here, if we moved here, then one, two, one, two. No, we can't make it that far. Okay. All right, well, that's fine. We're going to move right there. Perfect. And I think it might be best to move here and continue that attack. I mean, I could ta attack here, right? But I feel like if I move here, what is what are the next cards? Hmm. If I move here, right? Into the waypoint. I could probably kill this. So let's do that. Let's let's confirm this. Movement, infuse dark, and we'll make this attack. Okay, just enough. In this way, we can jump one, two, three back here. Now this is a space, um, and we can start attacking back there. Maybe I'm not sure. But we'll see what happens. Um, but since we have light, let's definitely take this and we'll take both of these. We can use the four, the move four and then defensive stance. We can use that attack four there. Uh, we'll just take both of these. We'll go as early as we can for the most part. Um, in your case, however... We can take this so that we can infuse earth. Is there a reason to heal? Does anybody really need healing? Because what I could do instead is like... Let's take these two. I'll figure out what to do with that. And we want to go as early as possible with, with you. Okay. Okay. So, I didn't really get to take a look here, but unfortunately the bandit guards are going to be, they're moving one and attacking a three at range two. Double the value of all your move abilities. Um, I mean, what I'd like to do is this, right? And then we we jump into a good location and then just attack for two. That doesn't really seem like a, a good idea. Moving here, I don't really want him to be the focus of the attack, right? So I could do like move two and then move over to here. Um, but again, I, I don't want it. Okay, I see it. I see it now. So we're going to do that. We're going to move two over here. We'll take the times two. I mean, this is not going to be a whole lot here, but uh, we'll at least be able to 
Um, move over here and we'll do an attack to... Okay, attack three. Good. It's not bad. But at least this way, I mean, this one's going to be attacking the, the elite archers, going to attack the night shroud. Um, these two will be attacking the Kragheart because what I'm going to do is put the Kragheart right here. Yep. So I'm not going to heal at all, uh, which is fine. Skip the rest of that movement and then do your jumpy thing. Good, we're bringing in Earth now. And then we can make a, an... Actually, we can make a, a, an attack two just right here. Um, and hopefully we grab now. Okay. Okay. I was hoping for that plus one. We did have a potion that would have helped, but um, I think that it's fine. Okay, so we're receiving zero damage there, and yikes, uh, three damage here. Okay, here's here's a good idea. We'll be able to attack both of them with this and poison. Um, let's do that. We are going to use Earth, however I don't know, he might take a, uh, or the Kragheart might take a long rest. That's not far enough. Well, it's still worth it. Nope, that wasn't worth it at all. Uh, and we didn't get any, I guess we got the one from the actual attack, but, um, it's poison. Okay, he's poisoned. All right, now we need to actually get into a good position here. This is a good place. Let's step up to here, confirm. Uh, we'll skip and we'll make a good attack here. I'm not too worried about that. The, uh, I didn't want to use the Jagged Sword. We'll use it on the one that has the most health, of course, so. Okay, so it looks like we're probably going to have to take a rest with everybody. Yep. Um, but that's not going to be a good idea, of course. Uh, we'd rather, I could kill this Bandit Archer pretty easily, so I think we'll have to do that. Um, we could do that with the Night Shroud, maybe. Uh, the Crag Heart, I'd like to take a long rest. So let's take a long rest with you. And I'd like to take a long rest with you. That way we have our kind of our tanky gear can come back. Um, I guess I could have used the Jagged Sword and then and then rested. Okay. And let's go short rest here. Let's definitely. That's tough. Wings of Night. You know what? Redraw. Smoke Step. Ah. There goes Smoke Step. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Let's go with the the one that we just took and smoke step. <laughs> I want smoke step for that. Um, all right. Not smoke step then. We can go for curse actually. This would be a good one as well. Um, instead of going invisible, just just uh, 
Use Doomed Breeze for a muddling attack and infusing darkness. Uh, the bottom action would be... I don't really know. Let's take this anyway, and we'll we'll continue to use this. We can move up Curse and then go Invisible. As for the Elementalist... You know what? Long, long rest for the Elementalist too. So it's just going to be the Night Shroud. The other attacks will be against them, and I'm fine with that. That's pretty rough, so I'm hoping that I can kill that archer now. Actually, let's let's just step right here. Skip and confirm target. So that's the second, I think. Yep, the second curse is, is now in. And I hope, okay, good. We've, we've dealt with that, that's perfect. We can still go invisible, I'm all right with that. They do have a couple curses now in their modifier deck. Um, so maybe we'll get lucky and that's what they pull. Nope, that's not what he pulled. All right. Uh, this is all new too. I, I'm liking the lines, so it actually shows you know this, then this, then this, then this. Um, I wonder if that's what they're going to do, because that it isn't that way in Gloomhaven, but I don't see why they shouldn't do that here, right? Like. Well, this one's probably... Oh, so here. Like, move two. Draw a line right there, and then bless. I, I think... I don't see why they shouldn't do that, or why they wouldn't do that. It just seems like a the right thing to do. Um, since they're doing that with Jaws of the Lion, with Frosthaven... Well, with Frosthaven, it's a completely different uh, story, because it looks like they want to get rid of text altogether and just have icons. Uh, which is pretty strange. But I kind of liked it, actually. You know what? Daybreak. See ya. I probably could have paused through this because I have another one, but... Um, I'll, I'll walk through this. Not sure, I mean, un Unstable Upheaval probably would be a good one. I think I'll go for that. Um, it's a burn burn anyway, like the top is burned, the bottom is burned. Um, now for you, this is a tough one. I could go with this, and I think I will. We only have this one room left. Do I think that I'll be able to have a, uh, a triangle formation? No, oh, here we go. This one. I'm not going to put him in a uh, melee range. And I can I can skip out on this. It's a pull. Yeah, let's, let's drop that one. There we go. There we go. I, now, this would be a good time to use this. Um, the minor mana potion. Because... I could, for instance, uh, well, bring in anything, and then it's an attack for a range four, or bring in fire right now, and then it would be an attack of five. Because we, again, let's get through this room. Let's, let's kill this enemy as quick as possible. I'd like to pick up some of this money, however, and it might be easy. We could pick this one up, and then we can move here in a later turn. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's bring in fire. All right. We can make this uh, bigger attack right now. So since I know that's what's going to happen, I'll do this on camera real quick. Um, and, uh, oh, right. I had used this. I was like, I don't remember this. 
Um, but I knew that I that uh, it had that. So let's go with raw enhancement, and then oh whoops, uh, brilliant flash. Brilliant flash to loot here. And then the next round we could walk up to here. I think, yeah, you could walk around this pillar. Yeah, so you'll be, eh. the uh, elementalist will be our, our looter as we're walking toward the next room. Okay, well, let's see what the next cards are. Okay, so I think I have enough firepower to kill this bandit guard elite, there are tiny chances of missing every single attack, but uh, we'll just have to see if that works. So, I, I don't think so. Um, first up is the Night Shroud. It's not really going to do much. Um, all attacks, we're just going to play this bottom action for the infusing dark element. And then Black Knives, we will use the um, We'll put out the top action as a uh, um, ability, an ongoing ability that we can use the next four times that we attack while invisible. So, yeah, I think that'll work out because we have, um, well, we'll be getting Wings of Night back, but we also, where is it? Oh, there it is. So we can run in with this in the next round and maybe do this attack and then we can uh, use like black knives. But, okay, that's the next round though. So 23 with the, or 28 with the Kragheart. Um, just trying to go fast. We're going to use Crater as a ranged attack and then run toward the door with Explosive Punch. Sunkeeper, Tactical Order to move and Holy Strike to stun if she does actually go before then stun and we can just continue to to hit if we don't kill him in the next round anyway or in this round anyway it'll be at least stunned but and then 48 raw enhancement we already saw this and then we'll loot uh but picking up the loot on the next round as well so well that is unfortunate we'll be taking um a hit here um also poisoning the Sunkeeper. We'll have to deal with that. So let's get through the Night Shroud's turn pretty quickly here. It would be nice to heal. I have some ways of healing, so I think you'll be fine. Oh, that's right, and he is shielding up too. That's annoying. Okay, well, uh, good hit. Yeah, I'm not sure about this anymore. Nope, we won't be hitting that, uh, dealing any damage there. Um, oh man, well, let's... Let's still continue toward this door anyway. We will still stun now. Oh, I should have... Okay, okay, good. Good, we can use the Jagged Sword. We did deal the damage. Stunned and wounded. We can uh, walk away now. And I'll feel a little better about that. Um... Move all the way to here, sure. Actually, we could just go here and uh, pick up that gold anyway. How many more does she have on that? Just the one, you know what? Let's heal that poison off and we will gain back her equipment after that nasty hit. This <laughs> it's an attack of three because of the shield. Um, so I hope that uh, we can deal some good damage here. 
I haven't seen any times twos yet. So that would be nice. I'm hoping to see some times twos uh, at some point this scenario. All right, well, stunned and wounded. I'm not too worried about this one anymore. So we can run into the next room and be a little, little cautious. There's potentially a good amount of enemies in here, so I don't, I don't think that we should just run in um, without some shield or something like that. That's probably going to be best. Um, yeah, yeah. So let's uh, let's see how this works out. All right, this round we have the Sunkeeper going first at 23, cautious advance, shielding up with. With uh, two shield and practical plans to move in with five this will give her a little bit of uh, options we might just open the door and then take a step back I'm not entirely sure yet uh, I mean we could move up and then move all the way back or move in and take a, a step in a certain direction as well so this this will this move five one two three four five we could make it as far as this um, or Kind of run back away if we wanted to um, then the elementalist with move two infusing um, earth and formless power to attack potentially probably well attack three at range three uh, likely attacking this i don't think i'll be anyone will be close enough to be making an attacks anywhere else so then at 29, the Crag Heart. Now I wanted to do it kind of this way where we can use Earth and then infuse it as well. Um, so we'll we'll go this way. We'll be able to Dirt Tornado muddling a whole bunch of enemies because we have, or they have, some uh, curses. So we'd like to see some of those being pulled, right? And this, plus the boots, we could get pretty far and start dealing some damage and infuse some earth. Oh, and then of course, all right, well, move one, attack three. We don't have to worry about that, and we don't have to worry about these either, unless they're standing, I guess, right here. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, last is the um, Night Shroud with going very late. I don't think I'll be able to do much, but I, I kind of had, I didn't really know any other choice here. So um, I'd like to go invisible so that I can make an attack. I don't think you'll be able to make an attack. So we'll, we'll think about this. Okay, let's open up this door anyway. I'd like to see what's, what's back here. Yeah, open the door. Okay. Oh, they're not even shamans, actually. They're uh, just archers. They're elite Enox archers. So look at that. There are uh, five hounds here. Three of them are elites, and two of them are um, normal. They're not doing too much. So really, we could step all the way in. Or we could take a step to something like here, and then they would all surround her. That might be a good idea too. What are they doing? Move one, attack two, creating the traps. Okay. I'm surprised there's no like text or anything. What's what's the story here? There was bandits over here, and now there's Enox archers with some hounds. Like, it'd be nice to see. A little bit of text. I think I like this idea. Um, actually, right here. That way they're all attacking her. And then we'll pull up the shield. There shouldn't be too much damage. This way it will put one of the wolves into the doorway. And that way we can actually deal some good damage with the Night Shroud. This was kind of my thought was, I'd like to pull some of the enemies through the doorway, but I didn't want to clog it up too much. So 
This this should help. Should work. Good. There's one of them. Great. Thank you. That's going to help me quite a bit. So, let's make this attack now. Plus one. Great. Now we won't have to worry about you at all. And... You know, I really want that money that you're about to drop here. There's not many um, options about walking too far. So... How greedy do I want to be? Let's let's skip it. Four gold. We should be we should be fine without it. Okay, so zero. That's good. There's no like other effects either, so that's pretty nice. All right. Well, we're taking one, but we can mitigate that. Like it's not. Um, there's oh, it's not the um, the curse, but it was a null anyway. Times two goes away. Perfect. And I'm going to take the one damage. I don't want to use that for that smaller amount. Um, but now take, take, take a look at this. What we're going to use is everything that we've got. So it's an attack three. Um, it isn't going to attack here, that's too bad. But, this is going to be pretty nice. We will be muddling our friend, the Sun Keeper. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I think that's going to be fine. Let's, let's do it. And we can't see here. Again, I think it might be because the corner that is making this, um, the corner of the hex I think is touching the wall and that's what's negating it now that could be the rule uh, yeah I don't know great we killed the one that mattered all the other ones are um, muddled and I'm not going to do this because I can't really get too far. I, I would have been nice if I could jump or anything else, but um, and I want to leave this open for the Night Shroud to move in and kill this one. So we will kind of do this and then move back here to confirm this movement. Let's get movement. So, because I didn't use it, that would have been nice if I, um, if I could have canceled it, but okay, it's too late and that's fine. So move all the way to here. We'll be picking up that. Go invisible. We'll make this attack. And after we make this attack, we can actually make a second attack at range. So let's make the attack here. Great. Well, we took out two. And see how powerful uh, he gets. Pretty, pretty good. And it's still pretty early. It's only what, level two, level one. So, yeah, we could. At higher levels, he's just very almost unstoppable. Okay, we want extra movement and the jump actually will work out pretty well. So we'll take this malleable evocation and all enemies that are two away. That's not going to be too helpful with us. Let's take stoking hall hail. 
so that we can just make a range attack and we'll be able to stand right here because of that jump. That'll work out pretty well. Um, now we need to get back here pretty quickly. And we do have earth. What we could do is no gold anyway. Um, let's do something like this. We can we can get ready with this and heal somebody for two, probably. Probably the uh, Sun Keeper. As for the Sun Keeper, well, we want we can we could use this. We'll need to make sure that he's in a better spot. And I think that might be okay. He could stand right here, right? So empowering command, and then um, well, let's use defensive stance. It's a later card. We can just do an attack four. We should be able to take them out pretty quickly, so. Uh, this is bad. That's very bad. We're going to be taking a couple pretty heavy hits for the um, uh, Sun Keeper here. And then being immobilized with from those archers in the back. Ah, oh, that's right, but they are muddled, so we won't be taking a whole lot of damage. Oh, that one wasn't muddled. Ouch. Let's move up. Let's make... Um, I guess he's going to be the target. Let's attack here. We still haven't drawn a times two yet. We've drawn a couple of those. And, oh yeah, that's right, we can, since we're invisible, let's make this attack. That helps. That helps. Okay. Well, let's... Let's definitely use this. Confirm that movement. And now we're going to skip the uh, shield there. I want to be dealing as much damage to this as possible. Okay, finally the times two. I hadn't seen it yet. Um, but we've dealt with one of them at least. Now we're going to have to be... We're going to be discarding a card here for this attack unless they draw... Uh, discarding two cards. This one's going to be useless now, and we can drop that one, so we'll burn those two cards. Um, actually, undo. <laughs> I see what I was about to do there. Let's actually make this attack instead of having him do the attack, because if, if he missed or something then he would take that one damage. Uh, this way we can, well, we could pick up some money, right? But uh, this way the retaliation would have been on her instead of him. Uh, I don't want to burn two more cards because he only has one life left, so. So, we still have him coming in next. Let's not go too far, right? Move to here. Get that movement. Cragheart's turn. We can heal a little bit. Let's heal her because she's probably going to be the one uh, taking more of the attacks. And then we'll get ready for the next um, 
the next round with him or with the crag heart all right so what do we think here this one would be a good one actually you and all adjacent uh, allies suffer no damage this round let's take that and let's actually go for this too and we can heal um, 39 I hope that's fast enough I hope it's fast enough try to get in here quickly maybe we can push I don't think it's gonna work but uh, yeah one two and then one two three four so we won't be we won't be close enough so let's take this let's take this one just so that we can actually deal some damage that would be one two three and then we can target this area now we really need to go in um, massive boulder and crushing grasp just to get moving the problem is we don't have boots do we no we do not and we don't have any way of getting in further either so we're not actually going to be okay we can move four with that one two three four but we don't have any range attack so what I'm gonna do here is short rest and I'm going to burn dirt tornado so this way we have something so here's a move four and then we can use massive boulder massive boulder is going to be great because then they'll both suffer damage as well as taking that attack three um, and we're just going to long rest with you because you can't move there's no reason to uh, have you short rest to not really be able to do anything so let's move up we'll take take that money one two three yeah we can still make that attack okay and then ice spikes let's rotate that so that we can actually hit them and confirm the target all right one damage it's nothing but it, uh, it it helps let's move all the way in so that they that he's the one that they're going to be attacking because he has nearly full health now great let's make this attack here and here so if we actually deal three damage then this attack will suffer uh, he'll attack suffer or he'll suffer one damage from this attack Good. So this one's going to be dead. That's one less incoming attack. And we've even brought in some earth element as well. And we can block that incoming damage. But I, I paused thinking that it was the end of the round, but we still have... <laughs> I'll have a couple more to go okay so we don't need this anymore can't reach with with this one we could still heal <clears throat> I think that's what I'll do let's let's move up so we're just a little bit closer and I'm gonna heal just heal herself up grab some experience out of that that's not too bad we have three uh, elements ready for us in the next round so that'll be pretty pretty uh, helpful now this one would be nice to you know run do uh, what is it run up six and then loot I'm gonna keep that I'm gonna keep this one and 
I guess we'll drop that one. Kind of have some better options. We'll we'll use those. I mean, it's it's this is probably the last round. I don't see it going any further than this anyway. We do have some money just sprinkled around here. I don't think I'll be able to pick up any of that, but we'll see. Uh, let's choose the cards that are available. We're just going to take a short rest here. I'm not too worried about what's going on. Uh, it would be nice to grab some experience though, right? Let's go for Stoking Hail to stun, grab that experience. And I guess we need to move up, don't we? Not a lot of options. It'd be nice if I was a little closer, wouldn't it? So that I could do attack and an attack. Hmm. Well. I guess uh, I'll take a look at these cards. And uh, be right back. All right. I probably spent too much time thinking about this, but uh, we'll be going with the Elementalist pretty early, just moving and stoking hail. This way it'll be stunned, we don't have to worry about any incoming damage. I mean, it's it's the end, right? Um, we also, plus one for the range attacks, Earth and Clawed, grab another. If it even survived that first attack, then uh, it shouldn't survive after that. Um, we'll just see how this is going to work. Try and get some points out of that if we can. And Silent Force with the Night Shroud. I'm going to try and pick up some money somewhere. We'll see how... there are. There's four gold back here. Uh, plus the three from Dancing Shadows. So it could be, you know, like one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we'll be able to make it back there, so... All right, let's see what turn they're going. Uh, 56, so we should almost certainly uh, kill it before it gets a turn. So, take a step up to here. Uh, there isn't any money. There are, I guess there's a little bit back here. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if, oh man. It's really, really hard for me to leave money behind. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell that, but... Um, confirm here. And we'll make this attack. Okay. Well, not a lot of damage. It's stunned, so we don't have to worry about its attack. Let's see if we can... If the... Crag Heart can take care of it. Nope, still alive, huh? Hmm. I'm wondering if I should just let it go so that we can pick up some more money, right? Because... No, let's just end it. <laughs> let's just end it. We're going to go right here. Move. I, I already missed the uh, the double click. I have to say, I, I liked the double click. Sure, I made some mistakes because of it, but um, yeah, I, I, they weren't so bad that uh, poor gold there. They weren't so bad that it it was. It, I didn't complain about the double click. Um, all right, just, just move there so I can use the loot. Get the movement, confirm the action. And, oh, actually, that would have been really cool. If I would have looted and then ran somewhere else, that's too bad. Confirm the movement, um, skip, and there, done. 
I, I like to prolong it at the end. I'm sorry about that. It's it's it just becomes so grindy at the end and I want the puzzle to work in a way that I can pick up as much money as I can. Um, but in the end, it's it's nice to just finish and get it over with, right? So these guys are obviously an organized band dealing in looting and robbery. Entrance of the shrine is filled with stolen goods. The good news is that we should be able to make a bit of money selling this. But if I were you, I'd check out that check out that any other shrines in the area are safe. Okay. Bullseye, we've killed ten Enox archers. So it looks like none of this really changed. Um, it would have been nice to see a couple more additions. I, I mean if these stats, if this first stat box went all the way down to here and it just showed one, you know, that would be pretty cool. I'd be completely down with that and to add some more statistics to uh, to look after, or to look at after. Um, yeah, well, anyway, not too bad. The Cragheart killed the most and dealt the most damage while the Sunkeeper took the most damage. Um, nothing too spectacular here to look at. I guess the Cragheart killing five is, is pretty nice, right? Exit that. Well, that was uh, the first Cragheart personal quest. We took that pretty pretty easily. Um, I am starting to miss the higher difficulty a little bit, so I I will consider upping the difficulty again. It's these quests have been pretty easy, and it might be because they're all level one enemies. The level one enemies are are pretty straightforward, uh, to be honest. So level two, typically they're they're still pretty easy. Um, it's when you have a bunch of like. When you finally reach level two and then they become level three or worse when it when you are level three and they're level four that right there is is pretty difficult um i'll i'll say that but at these lower levels uh level one is kind of too easy level two is pretty manageable uh the enemies that is where your party is level one the Shrine of the Roots is found in the forest near Lowtown. If they are being systematically looted, I worry that would be a prime target. I don't actually see what she's talking about. Did it show it? Oh, okay. There it is. Um, it just showed us Lowtown, so... Okay, so it's it's a bunch of bandits. But we have to get to level three and we have the uh sun keeper leveled up to three so we'll be able to level her up in the next episode um, i might do a little bit of a change i'm not entirely sure i was thinking of doing like one change per week um, have the change on tuesday and then thursday would be kind of the the same group we can change from week to week and i might stick to that kind of plan um, I've made a lot of plans and I've uh, changed it up quite a bit. So I, <laughs> I can't make, I can't promise that I'm going to stick to this plan for too long. I like to just change things up, um, when while we have the option to. So, oh, that's right, we did gain a perk point for the crag cart as well. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and uh, stay. Thanks for stopping by. I hope to see you next time.